Hey everyone, welcome to the seven minute workshop. This is where we chat with experts to break down complicated and timely topics that affect your business. We do that in just seven minutes. You know, that is slightly under the time it will take the women's 800 meter freestyle swimmers vying for Olympic gold on Saturday. It's your guess as to which one of that those topics is more exciting. But today we are gonna be sticking with the theme of automating accounting processes, which is our theme for this month. And we're back with our senior product marketing manager, Scott Beaver, to discuss management accounting. We'll explain what it is, how it differs, differs from finance, what size and type of business might, be, uh, might require management accounting. And then we're gonna dive into some of the challenges around it. And we'll talk a little bit about how NetSuite might help solve them. Okay, before I bring Scott on, a quick reminder, if you have any questions throughout today's discussion, you can ask them in the comments and we'll get to them at the end of the conversation. And hey, don't forget, tell us where you're tuning in from. We get people from all over the world. We've had people from um, countries in Africa, South America, Europe, all uh, North America. If you're in uh, America, tell us what state you're from. Uh, we'd love to give you a shout out right back. Okay. Without further ado, let me welcome Scott Beaver. Hey, Scott, thanks for joining us today again. Hey, Fritz, how you doing? Uh, hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm here in the Middle East. Where are you tuning in from? I am in a small town north of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, well, we're very far apart uh, distance-wise, but I feel very close to you and the accounting topic. We're going to talk about management accounting today. Why don't we start out by giving a definition of it? Yeah, great. So management accounting is a very specialized discipline within the broader context of accounting. Um, a management accountant is going to use both a combination of financial, operational, even statistical data to help the business make smarter decisions, um, to inform strategy, and ultimately to improve business performance. Okay, so maybe let's break that down. What's the difference between, because that sounds a lot like, you know, maybe more of a finance function. What's the difference between management accounting and finance? Yeah, so they're very closely related. Um, and the management accounting team sometimes is falls within the finance group. But finance is really more focused on the capitalization structure of a business and the financial results. So they're involved in producing the financial statements and analyzing whether a company's, you know, the whole company is profitable. Whereas um, the management accountants are looking at a divisional, um, a, a departmental, or a product level, and are really in, more interested in operational performance and ensuring that the business is running profitably from that standpoint. So it's a completely different view, though they use much of the same data, financial data. Got it. And and so. I mean, typically when you um, are starting to think about management accounting, what size of business are we talking about? What, what level of complexity maybe within the business would require management accounting? Well, the first thing I'll say is that almost any company can benefit from the analytical approach that management accountants bring to the table. Um, but generally you start seeing this as a specific role within larger organizations, particularly particularly those that are very uh, product centric. So manufacturing, distribution, um, you also see them in a lot of management consulting firms, um, whether that be you know a Bain or a McKinsey or a smaller boutique firm. So that's where you tend to see that as a role. But I should also say that the lines between management accounting, finance and traditional accounting are blurring, particularly the, in, those, in the smaller organizations where you may have someone with accounting background actually doing much of this analysis or even the CFO doing some of this analysis. So it's um, you're not going to have the dedicated role, but you are going to have some of that function being performed. Got it. OK, um, let's talk about what, what are some of the, the challenges um, around management accounting? I'd say the number one challenge is data. Because, you know, I'm not just looking at financial results. I'm also using operational data. And in many companies, either that data is simply not available or it's in multiple systems. So getting access to see, you know, what, what my production costs are, what my materials costs are, 
how much I'm selling, all this stuff, you know, getting that into one place where I can use it to do my job. That's the biggest challenge. Number two, though, is often um, lack of tools. A lot of times management accountants are wizards with spreadsheets. And so that's where they default. But spreadsheets can only do so much. So those are the two big challenges, just getting the data. And then the third, I would say, would, would be getting buy in because you're making recommendations that may be um, at odds with what other operational managers may think is right. So getting buy into your ideas and your recommendations is probably the third challenge. Got it. Um, I want to give some shout outs here. I, I'm probably going to uh, mess up some names, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Uh, Bharat from the Bay Area in California. Amadou, who is uh, joining us from France, uh, specifically in Paris. Uh, Bonsoir. Uh, it's nighttime there right now. Um, Jeff from Orange County, California, my old stomping grounds. Um, Kimora from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, hello, and thanks for tuning in. We have Arun from the U.K. And um, from India, gosh, I, I'm really, I'm going to try this. Uh, Shaha Jahan. Hopefully I came close. Tell us, tell me if, if I came close. And Yvette from Canada as well. So thank you all for, for joining in. Please keep uh, shouting, uh, shouting out where you're coming from and your name. That's uh, fantastic. Um, Scott, you talked about um, having access to data as being one of the big challenges. So that naturally leads me to a segue here of how does NetSuite help address some of these challenges? Yes. Yeah, so obviously that's a great question. One of the things that makes um, NetSuite uniquely capable of supporting management accounting approaches is that in addition to having access to all that real-time financial data, make it very easy to combine that data with operational details and characteristics, as well as statistical data that you may want to keep track of. And it's all available centrally. So I'm not having to dig through multiple systems and I can decide as an organization what's important for me to track over and above, again, the, the financial details. So I've got that complete record. That's number one. Number two, I have amazing tools. Um, planning and budgeting is one of the, the places where management accounting gets involved. And we have you know, fantastic tools for planning and budgeting, as well as you know, other business intelligence capabilities. So that makes the job of a management accountant much easier. And performing that type of analysis, even if you don't have the background or the training, much easier. And, and are there, I mean, in terms of tools, you know, the, the ability to just have this data at your fingertips, but also kind of present it in ways that make some of this decision making and, and um, data driven decisions easier. You know, what, what, what are some of the common tools uh, that are required for that? Yeah, that's, that's one of the key points is presentation. Because trying to get buy-in, you know, when you have the data, it's one thing, but when you can show that data in a way that's visually compelling to your audience, makes it much easier. Raw numbers, not everyone uh, is motivated by raw numbers. So that ability to create and customize the reporting, to develop layouts, to ve develop visualizations that make sense to your audience is another great, um, you know, capability within NetSuite that makes it much easier to do your job. So it's not just about having the data, which is critical, but it, it, and having a way to analyze it, but having a way to share it and show it. And then, you know, we also have tools that make it easy to pull that same data over and over again as it's being updated. So you don't have to recreate queries every time I want to look at well, what's the product, you know, the profitability of a particular product line, for instance. So having that ability to save those queries and use them and modify them however you want to is also um, you know, really helpful. Got it. Um you were talking about kind of the blurring of lines between finance, regular, you know, regular accounting. I don't know how else to say that. Um, and management accounting. Is there, it sounds like there are some special skills or maybe a level of experience that's required for someone to say practice managerial accounting. Is that, is that true? Or maybe better asked is what, what special skills are needed? Yeah, so that's a great question. And and there's definitely training involved. Um, you can even get certifications in management accounting. Um, and, you know, if that's of interest to you, you should definitely pursue that certification because it's going to be much easier for you to find a, find a place in a larger company in particular. But 
you've got from a skill standpoint, you've got to have really good analytical skills, whereas financial accountants have to have really good accuracy if they're not involved in the analysis piece um, with the management accountant, you know, you're not entering as many transactions as you are using that data to make and making sense of it. So you've got to have great analytical skills, but over and above that, you have to have a solid understanding of how business works. You know, so you may be looking at manufacturing. Um, so you've got to know all the manufacturing processes within the organization and how they should and shouldn't operate and be, able, and you need to be very process oriented as well. And, and then the third sort of leg of the stool, you've got to have a really good understanding of technology because it is all about having the tools and being able to use those tools to you know, support your arguments and your recommendations. Okay, um, we're going to go to some questions right now. Um, so keep, uh, keep putting your questions in the comments. I do want to do some more shout outs here because I love doing that. We have Betty from New York City. Thank you for joining. We have Emmanuel from Argentina and Suresh from India. Um, Anna for also from Argentina. So we have uh, two people from Argentina joining us today and two from India. So uh, it's not a contest, but it could be. Um, keep, keep telling us where you're uh, joining us from. All right, so let's get to um, some questions here from the, from the audience. One of them is, is just about the different methods of managerial accounting. Are there different methods and, and, and what are they? Yeah, there. Um, I don't think seven minutes gives us enough to talk about all the different man, uh, uh, methods. But one, you know, some of the more common ones. Cost accounting is an element of managerial accounting. Um, there's throughput accounting. Um, there, there's agile accounting, and really, it, it what the, the main point there is depending on what industry I'm in and what my role within the organization. You know, am I looking at um, for instance, time studies to see how long it takes different processes to work and if there are ways to prove the efficiency and measure that versus am I looking at the profitability of a particular product or a particular division? So, you know, the, the concepts are similar, but the technique I apply may be different. And sometimes it varies by industry as well. Got it. Okay. So it's kind of like there are different kinds of shrimp, uh, but maybe a little more accounting, like... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's a great I analogy mean, that I'll, I hope you never use again. But there are okay. different types. Yeah, there are obviously very different types of accounting and very different subdisciplines within management or managerial accounting. All right. I'll keep my Forrest Gump jokes out of this. Um, we have a question from Tom in San Mateo, which is um, what's beneficial about bringing uh, management accounting in house? rather than outsourcing it you, you touch on that a little bit and, and maybe get let's get some more clarity about when you would want to outsource it versus uh, bring it in in-house yeah so um if if it's a project focus if you just want to understand something one time and you don't think there's enough complexity in your business then bringing outside expertise makes a lot of sense um particularly if you know you lack any skill set internally in a more complex business, however, where you think, you know, this an analysis, there's lots of opportunity for us to improve uh, results, to consider new products, um, you know, efficiency, that's when you want to develop that. And I would say for many smaller organizations, it just doesn't make sense financially to work with some of the larger, um, you know, management, management consultants, but there are boutique firms that, you know, tend to focus on maybe a specific industry or a certain size organization. And that's another approach. Um, but ultimately, having the skill set in house is incredibly valuable if you've got enough work for them to do. Got it. Um, we have another question from uh, George in Boston. And this kind of gets back to the idea that you were talking about um, of, of what management accounting has to there's a little bit more of a strategic nature and, and where the business is heading. But can you automate it? Um, and if so, what kind of savings, uh, time, money, resources can you get by doing that? Well, it's, you know, you can't, you can't automate the mental ability to make sense of the data, but what you can do is automate some of the reporting and some of the anal analysis. You know, I refer briefly to that ability to have, um, you know, a saved search or, or query that I can go back to time and time again to see how data has changed. That's one form of automation. 
Um, but in term, and you can automate your planning and budgeting processes and the tracking of performance against those plans. That can be automated as well. But in terms of the interpretation, um, you know, if if you're thinking that um, artificial intelligence is going to be able to make those recommendations for you, that's not going to happen. The brain power, the human brain power, is the key thing that's brought to bear in management accounting. So that part is going to be hard to automate. Okay. Well, that is all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us once again, Scott. Oh, you're quite welcome. All right. Well, as always, a big thanks to all of you for tuning in from all around the world, uh, putting up with my, uh, my, my Forrest Gump jokes. And uh, we'll be back with Scott again next week to discuss cost accounting. That takes place on Tuesday, August 3rd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you and have a great rest.